I'm going to show you how to create and texture ceramics in Cinema 4D and Redshift. Let's go, go, go! Shoo! We'll start by creating our vases. Jump into the front view and grab your pen tool. We're going to use this to draw the outline of our vase. Make sure your first point is at absolute zero on the axis. I'll then enable snapping to make it easier for us to create straight lines. We can now start clicking and dragging to create the shape for our lovely ceramics. You can see I'm creating some thickness to this, but I've skimmed over this part as there's an easier way to do this. We can now drop this into a lathe object, which will revolve our spline around the center of its axis. Shoo! We'll subdivide this quickly by holding command and pressing the subdivide button. Now it's silky smooth. This is a great setup because now we can edit our spline at any point and update our shape. We'll create a new spline shape and we'll quickly look at how to create thickness in a much easier way. All you need to do is press Ctrl A to select all your points, right click and select create outline. We can now click and drag to create an outline from our selected points. We'll chamfer the top to round it out and we'll also make sure to disable closed spline so that it calculates the thickness properly. I'll repeat this process to create our final vase and then we'll set up our scene. Before we start texturing we'll get the scene set up including lighting and composition. This is a pretty simple setup so just setting up a camera and using a cube and plane to create a floor and wall. Let's dive into the lighting. We'll start with a redshift sun and sky object and reposition this until we get something we're happy with. I'll play with the sun disk scale to soften the shadows and make this feel more natural. Let's make this scene more detailed by adding some additional details to cast some extra shadows into our scene. We'll start by grabbing a plane which we will then use to turn into a window. We'll move this to the left of the scene where the light source is coming from which will temporarily block our lighting. We're going to use an effect called Atom Array which will convert our edges into cylinders which simulates a window-like structure. This is great because we can adjust the radius of the window and also adjust the number of polygons in our plane to affect the style of window. I'll then use a forester tree to dial in some subtle tree shadows into our scene. Some final adjustments to the position of the window and the tree and we're in a good spot. To finish off this lighting setup I'm going to add a HDRI and blend it with our redshift sun and sky which will help to add some subtle detail and lift the shadows. I'm using one from Max and Ross's free HDRI pack which is really really good. All I did here was rotate the HDRI so that it matched the same angle as the redshift sun and sky and then remove some of the saturation so that it blended better. And just like that we have a lovely scene set up and we're ready to start texturing. One final thing, let's apply a redshift object tag to our models and then enable tessellation. This will subdivide our objects in a renderer whilst keeping them low poly in the viewport. Time to texture, let's start off with a vase. Let's create ridges which you can find in vases. Press shift C to bring up the node menu and search for max on noise. We'll connect this to the surface so we see how the noise looks and then start to tweak with the scale settings until we get this stretched look. We'll then create a bump map node and plug the max on noise into the bump input and then plug this into our material. This looks a bit overpowered so we'll tone down the height scale of our bump map. This looks better. Next I want to create a gradient for our vase, let's press shift C again and grab a ramp node. We can see the mapping of our ramp doesn't quite look right, so we're going to use a trick using vertex maps to create our gradient. We'll go into polygon mode and press ctrl A to select all polygons, and then press shift C in the viewport to bring up our menu and search for set vertex weight. We'll then hit ok on the next menu and now we have a vertex map which has turned our object red. With our vertex map selected, let's enable fields and create a linear field. We can then decrease the length of our linear field and change the axis to Y plus to change it to a vertical fall off. Back in our shader graph, let's create a vertex map node and then we can drag and drop our vertex map into this node. We'll plug this into the output and check the result. This looks much better and now we have a gradient driven by the vertex map and the linear field, creating a very flexible setup. We can tweak with the fall off of this map at any point to change our gradient. Let's leave it as a vertical gradient for now. I'll recolor this to have a green yellow gradient which looks pretty good. We could even add a shader field to our vertex map which will break up our linear fall off and make this gradient feel more abstract. Just plug a noise into the shader field and you can create endless results by playing with noise types and other parameters. Let's add some speckles to our vase. We'll start off by creating a material blender which we'll use to stack different materials. Plug our current material into the base input and then the material blender into the output surface. We'll then create a new material which will become the color of our speckles. We need to create a mask to blend between these two materials and for that we'll use a max on noise. We can then play with a scale and noise type until we get this speckled result. I found that the Veronoi noise type worked quite well. We can then open the output tab and use this to increase the contrast of our noise until we get these little white speckles. Let's plug this into the blend color for our material blender and voila we have our speckled result. They feel a bit dull at the moment so let's use a ramp to increase the white values of our noise. This looks better and now we can also play with the diffuse of our material to change the color of the speckles. 
Let's add some more detail to the speckles by creating a bump map node and plugging our noise into it, which will slightly emboss them. We'll then plug this into the bump input of the speckles material. This bump amount will be a bit intense, so let's drop this way down and then zoom in closer on our object to check it out. This looks good and we can see the embossing on our speckles and how this is reacting to the light. On to the next texture. We'll duplicate this material and apply it to our bowl. You can see we're getting this weird mapping, which is because we need a vertex map for this object, so we'll quickly create one. We'll then adjust the ramp color for our material and tweak the speckles slightly so it's not an exact copy of our vase. I want to give this bowl the impression that it's worn away, so we're going to use a curvature node. This will create a black and white map based on the curves of our object. I want to isolate this just to the top of the bowl, so let's decrease the radius of our curvature node. We'll then tweak the bias parameter to add more contrast and clamp the black values. We can now create a new material and use the black and white map from the curvature node to blend and isolate it just to the top of our bowl. This looks cool, but we can take this a step further by breaking up this curvature map to make it feel more worn and realistic. I've grabbed a max on noise, which we're going to use to affect the radius of our curvature map. If I plug this into the radius of our curvature, we'll see how it affects the result we get. We now have this noisy effect, which when we plug our material back into our input, gives us quite a rough look. This looks cool, but I want to keep this isolated just to the top of the bowl. We'll grab a color layer node, which we're going to use to to multiply our noise over a ramp. Let's take our vertex map and then plug it into a ramp node to remap it until we get a gradient which is similar to the curvature we had. We'll then take our noise and plug this into our color layer and change the mode to multiply. Now we have isolated our noise just within the white area of the gradient and we can plug this into the radius of our curvature. If we output the curvature node, we can now see we're getting this broken up look which feels more natural. We'll output our material and just like that, we have a lovely worn finish to our bowl. You can then tweak with the noise types and the remap of the vertex map to reveal more or less of the worn effect. I found that the dent noise type worked quite well. I then duplicated this material to our other bowl and changed some of the color and the noise types to add some variation. Onto the last material. We'll drag this new material onto our final vase and for this one, I wanna give it a gold finish. I wanna start by using a max on noise to add some color variation to our texture. I'll play with different noise types until I find something which I think will work well as a base texture. We'll then create a color layer node and plug our noise into layer one. Then plug the color layer node into the diffuse color of our material. Set layer one to multiply and now we can change the base layer color until we get a cool variation in our diffuse. I would decrease the opacity of layer one so it's more of a subtle effect. We'll output our material and we're already off to a great start. We're going to grab another max on noise and this time it will be used to create some subtle bump in our vase. We'll change the noise type to FBM and change the overall scale to be really small. You know the drill by now. We'll then grab a bump map node and link everything up. This is looking pretty good. You can now tweet with the color and the different noise types until your heart is content. I ended up changing the first noise type to something which feels more exciting, which will also be used for the final step of this texture. We'll grab a ramp node and use this to add contrast to our noise until we're left with this harsh black and white map. We'll then create a material blender node and you can already guess what we're about to do. We'll plug our current texture into the base color and then output the material blender to the surface. We'll then create a new material which we'll plug into layer one and we'll change the preset of that material to gold. Let's plug that remap noise into the blend color and voila, we have a lovely gold vase texture. As one final step, we'll create a bump map and plug the remap noise into it, which will then plug into the gold material. This will make the gold feel like it's a separate layer of the vase and just helps to add some additional detail. The principles we've learned over making these last few textures can be used to make all sorts of different materials. Using Maxon noises and material blenders can lead you to infinite possibilities and all different types of results. So it's really worth going wild with it and seeing what different results you can get. If you've watched this far into the video, drop a comment down below saying, those are some cool ceramics. Then join the Discord channel with a link in the description. Shoot me a DM over there and I will send you the project file for free. Thank you for watching. I hope you have an awesome day and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.